Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to go over how to measure the acceleration of a falling object. So let's get started. Measuring the acceleration of a falling object is another compulsory experiment that the SQA want you to be able to do and to be able to describe for the exam. So just like we did for measuring the acceleration of an object down a slope, we're going to go through a scientific report showing you how to do this experiment. So the aim, theory, method and results and so on. The aim of this experiment is to determine the acceleration due to gravity of a falling object. And before we look at the method, we need to look at a bit of theory to try and come up with an equation for this acceleration due to gravity, g. And the way we can do this is using equations of motion. So we're going to start with the second equation of motion, which is s equals ut plus a half at squared. Now because we're going to be using a ball bearing and it's going to be dropped from rest, then that means that the initial speed our initial velocity u is equal to 0 meters per second so that's going to simplify our equation straight away for us which gives us s equals a half at squared so we'll get rid of this ut because u is equal to 0 and because the acceleration here is due to gravity then we can write the a is equal to g because you might remember that acceleration due to gravity and gravitational field strength are actually equivalent quantities so replacing the a with g now we have s equals a half gt squared and lastly rearranging for g we can multiply by 2 on both sides to get rid of this fraction here that gives us 2s over here but we've still got this t squared so if we divide both sides by t squared then we end up with g equals 2s over t squared and it says here so by measuring the height that the ball is dropped and the time it takes to do so we can determine the acceleration due to gravity g so this experimental procedure that we're going to look at is quite simple all you're doing is dropping a ball and measuring the time taken for it to fall says here, note that mass does not appear in our final equation for g, so the mass of the ball bearing does not affect the time taken for it to fall, because in a sense this falling ball bearing is a projectile, and you might remember for projectiles, the mass of an object does not affect the time taken for an object to fall. And that's because the only force acting on it is that due to gravity downwards. So the method that I'm going to take you through here is using an electromagnet and a steel ball bearing, but it should be noted that you might have done a different experiment in class, and there are other ways of doing this, such as using the g-ball, where you drop the ball and it measures the acceleration for you. So it says here to collect a meter stick, a data logger, timing plate, electromagnet, steel ball bearing and a clamp stand. So that's the equipment we're using. You then set up the equipment as shown in this picture here. So up the top we've got our electromagnet and the electromagnet is connected to our timer and the timer is then connected to a timing plate. And initially the steel ball bearing is magnetised to the electromagnet when the electromagnet is switched on. So in order to get the ball to drop we need to switch off the electromagnet using this switch here. Now the electromagnet is held at a certain height using the clamp stand and the data logger or timer over here is going to measure our time for the ball to fall. And if we look here it describes the steps that we would take to do this experiment. So it says firstly to measure the time taken for the steel ball bearing to fall different heights or different distances. So I've chosen 0.25 meters, 0.50 meters and 0.75 meters, three different heights. Then says take three readings at each height and calculate average times. So from National 5 Physics you should be familiar with repeating your experiment and taking an average. We then use the average times t to calculate the acceleration due to gravity g at each height s using this equation here. So our heights are given by s, our time t is obtained from the timer or data logger over here and we can then calculate our g values. So here is a sample set of measurements that I took. So we've got distance s in meters, time t in seconds and we've got three columns of time because we repeated it three times and we've got average time t in seconds and then acceleration due to gravity g once you've plugged your numbers into the calculator and then I've taken an average of that. So at 0.25 meters we got these three results, at 0.50 meters we got these three results and at 0.75 meters we got these three results of time. Now notice the trend that as we increase in height from 0.25 to 0.5 to 0.75 the time taken for the ball to drop should be longer and that makes sense, the higher up something's got to fall the longer it's going to take to fall. We then obtained the average time values by adding up each row and dividing by three so we add up these three and divide by three add up these three and divide by three and then do the same for this one to get these results and once we plug in our average times and our distance s values into the equation then we get these results here now notice that when I take an average that our acceleration due to gravity g it was found to be 9.8 meters per second squared that's pretty accurate pretty bang on there because the true value or accepted value of g is 9.8 or 9.81 in fact meters per second squared the last thing to point out here is that air resistance was negligible in this experiment so we ignored it in this experiment if we didn't ignore air resistance then it would make things 
more complicated, but an analysis of that is beyond the scope of the higher physics course. That's all from me folks, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Whoa!